This is Coding Math, episode 47, Weighted Random. We've gone over random number functionality in a few videos previously, but there's more to go. Today I want to cover weighted random functions. A weighted random function is a way to define several random outcomes and choose one of those randomly, but in a way where you can say some outcomes are more likely to occur than others. You can do this down to a very fine degree of precision. This could be very useful in a game. Maybe at a certain point in the game a monster will appear. You might want to say that at a certain percent of the time it's a troll, some other percentage of the time it's a zombie, some other percent a ghost, and maybe some chance it might be a vampire. Whatever. You want it to be random, but you mostly want trolls with the occasional zombie or ghost, and every once in a long while a rare vampire will appear. Let's start out simple by creating a coin flipper application. First I'll draw a line down the center of the canvas. The right side will be for coins that land on heads, the left side for tails. Now I'll generate 100 coin flips. For each one we'll get a random number using math random. Now this gives us a nearly infinite range of numbers between 0 and 1. Actually it's not nearly infinite at all, but there are millions and millions of possibilities, and we just need two. We also want to make sure that there's an equal chance of us getting heads or tails. So we can just split this and say, if the random number is less than 0 0.5 we've got heads, otherwise it's tails. Then we'll get an x and a y value. y will be equal to math random times height, and x math random times width divided by 2. This will put it in the left half of the screen. But if heads is true, we'll add width divided by 2 to it to push it over to the right side of the screen. Finally, we just draw a circle at that x, y. So we launch this, and you see we have roughly equal amounts of coins on each side of the line. If you counted, you should get numbers pretty close to 50 on each side. Now we could have said if math random is greater than 0.5. But remember that math random returns numbers from 0 inclusive up to 1 exclusive. That means you could theoretically get 0 as a result, but you'll never get exactly 1.0. It will always be slightly less. So we want to include 0 0.5 in the upper range. That gives us 0 to 0 0.4999 as one choice, and 0 0.5 to 0 0.9999 as the other choice. Equal number of values in each range. So we say less than 0 0.5. If we were to include 0 0.5 in the lower range, that would give us a range of 0 0.5, and the upper range would go from something just above 0 0.5 to 0 0.999. This would give us a range of something under 0 0.499, and create a nearly imperceptible bias towards the lower range. Not enough to matter in most applications, but we'll keep ourselves honest. But this is a good segue into the next point. Say that instead of 0 0.5, we said if math random is less than 0 0.4. This actually gives us a pretty significant bias towards tails. Actually, we have a 40% chance of getting heads and a 60% chance of getting tails. Let's see if it's noticeable. We'll flip a bunch of coins. And it's not super obvious, but you should be able to see that there are more coins on the left side. If we change that value down to, say, 0 0.2, then it becomes quite obvious. So, we've just created a trick coin. A very accurate one. Okay, that was easy enough for two choices, but what about more? Let's say that in some game a player can win a prize by spinning a wheel, or defeating a monster, or something. Most of the time they're going to lose, say 75%. There's a 20% chance that they'll win one gold piece, and just a 5% chance that they'll win a treasure chest. So, we can code this up perfectly to those percentages. We'll start by listening for a mouse click, and then generating a random number called rand. Now, 75% of the time we want the play to lose. So we say, if rand is less than 0 0.75, console log, you lose. Easy enough. Now, 20% of the time, they need to win a gold piece. So we can say that if the random number is between 0 0.75 and 0 0.95, that's what they get. Now here, we don't want to simply say greater than 0 0.75, because if the value winds up being exactly 0 0.75, it'll fall through the cracks here. So we can't say else if rand is greater than or equal to 0 0.75 and rand is less than 0 0.95. And in that case, we tell the lucky player what they just won. Actually though, we already know that it's greater than or equal to 0 0.75 because we already handled the less than 0 0.75 case. So we can just say else if rand is less than 0 0.95. Now to handle that last 5%, we know it's going to be greater than or equal to 0 0.95 in less than 1, so we can skip the if and just say else and log the result. 
So we run this and we click a bunch of times and you see we're mostly losing, but sometimes getting a gold piece and once in a blue moon getting the treasure chest. It should average out to about one treasure chest in 20 or so clicks. You might get more or less than that in any given run of clicks, but eventually it'll average out to the given percentages. Well, that's all pretty straightforward, but not very elegant. Say we decide that the users are winning too often, and we want to make them lose more. But when they do win, we want the odds of a treasure chest to be a bit higher. Maybe 80% chance of losing, 13% chance of gold piece, and 7% chance of a treasure chest. We'll have to change the first if statement to read less than 0.8. The next one, the gold piece is 13%. So we'll have to add 0.13 to 0.8, so it goes from 80 to 93%. So we change the 0.95 to 0.93. The last one stays the same. Now it's not horrible for three choices, but as the choices build up, you're having to change all the numbers every time you tweak a single percentage and do all the math to work each range out. Also, it's not very clear in the code itself what the percentages are for each prize. You can only find them out by doing the math. All in all, it's a very complex and error-prone system. So let's fix it. First of all, let's define the percentages up front in an easy-to-read way. We'll say var lose equals 0.8, gold piece equals 0.13, and treasure chest equals 0.07. This lets us know exactly what the odds are for any one item and allows us to easily change them. All we have to do is to make sure the three choices add up to one. In fact, later I'll show you a variation on the strategy where that's not even a necessity. Now we need to alter our code to use these values. I'm still going to generate the random number, but I'm going to move the prize determining code to its own function called getPrize, which will get past this random number. Now like before, we first checked to see if rand is less than 0.8, but this time it's encoded in the lose variable. So we say if rand is less than lose, return nothing. If we pass that test, we're done and the function returns. If we don't pass that conditional, we know that rand is larger than lose, which is 0.8. Let's say, for example, that rand is 0.91. What we do is subtract lose from rand. 0.91 minus 0.8 gives us 0.11. Now we can simply check if rand is less than gold piece, which is 0.13. It is, so we say return a gold piece. But say it ran with 0.97. We made it past the last conditional, and in this case we know that there's only one choice left, so we return a treasure chest. Back in the click handler, we can log the result like U1 plus the prize. I'll also log Rand here just so we can verify the results. And we'll run this and click a bunch of times, and we can see that the prizes we're getting are about right. If there's any doubt, we can verify that Rand is in the right range each time. Nothing should be less than 0.8. Treasure chest should be 0.93 or greater, and in between that, a gold piece. And now we can change the percentages much more easily. Say we decide there's too much losing. We bump lose down to 50% by changing that to 0.5, and we'll have to increase the others to make up for it. I'll make gold piece 30% and treasure chest 20, because I'm feeling generous. And we can see those new values in play here. Now let's add a couple of prizes to see how this system scales. In fact, rather than merely losing and getting nothing, maybe the user occasionally gets something bad, like poison, say 8%. So we'll set a poison variable at 0.08. And sometimes they get food, say 10%. Adjusting the other percentages to add up to one, we have lose 0.5, gold piece 0.25, treasure chest 0.07, Poison 0.08, and Food 0.1. Note that these don't have to be in any particular order. It'll all still work out just fine. Now we don't have to change anything in the click handler. We can jump down to the getPrize function. And the whole first part of that will continue to work, but we need to do the same thing with the other choices. If we don't get a gold piece, we subtract gold piece from Rand and check it against treasure chest. In that if statement, we return a treasure chest. If that doesn't pass, we subtract treasure chest and check it against poison, returning poison if that passes. If that doesn't pass, the only choice left is food, so we return that. Run that and click away and you see all the results. It'll take a bit of inspection to verify all of them, but really quickly you know that if Rand is less than 0.5, we should lose. Otherwise, we should win something. And that looks pretty good.
We're doing well here, but we can do better. Everything's all hard-coded now, and it's not very reusable. But what we're doing can be converted into an algorithm. We're checking if rand is less than the first value, and if so, returning something related to that. If not, subtracting that value and moving on to the second value and doing the same thing. So what we can do is convert the choices into an array of objects. Each object has a property named prize, which is a string of what the player gets, and a property named chance, which is the percent chance that they'll win that particular prize. I'll speed this up here because you don't really need to see me typing all this stuff. Okay, hopefully that all makes sense. Now, we'll get rid of what's in here in get prize and add a for loop that loops through this prizes array. We get a reference to each prize as we go through, and we say if rand is less than prize.chance, return prize.prize. .prize. Whenever we pass that conditional, we'll return and be done with it. But say we make it through, we just subtract prize.chance from rand, which sets us up for the next iteration. That's a lot cleaner, right? And now we can add any number of prizes to the list, remove them and change their percentages. As long as they add up to one, we're all good. Now, one last thing would be that adding up to one part. The only reason we have that requirement is because we're using the raw output of math random, which is from zero to one, and we're evaluating chances as percentages. But we can change that if we want. We can use any scale we want. We can even give whole numbers as chances. Let's say lose is eight chances, a gold piece is five, treasure chest is two, poison one, and food three. These all add up to 19, which is totally arbitrary. All we have to do is make sure rand ranges from zero to 19. In fact, I'll integrate the random number generator right into get choice. So I'll remove it here. Then all I need to do is figure out the total of all the choices. I'll create a total value set to zero and then loop through the array and add each prize's chance to total. In the end, total should equal 19. Then I'll say rand equals math random times total. That will give us a number between 0 and 19. If it's less than 8, we get nothing. From 8 to 13, we get a gold piece, etc. Click away and you see we're getting all kinds of results, with mostly weighted results toward nothing, which has the highest chance, and very few poisons, which has the lowest. And now you can freely add prizes and adjust their weights without changing anything else. It'll all just work. Want more poison? Just change this number and you're done. You get more poison. So that's that. Sorry if it's not very visual today, but this is still a super useful technique. In fact, we'll use it in one of our next fractal videos, which will be quite visual indeed.